Hello everyone, my name is Miranda Harper. I am the team leader for the total coliform rule, groundwater rule, and nitrates and nitrites with the public water supply section. This training video is intended to be for laboratory personnel and IT staff that are using their own in-house application to generate sample file information that will then be uploaded to CMDP. If you are a lab that is using our lab data submittal application, um, please uh, refer to our website and watch the CMDP lab training video for LDS users. Um, there is going to be a difference between the two training videos and the LDS training video is going to have information specific to the LDS application. Um, but for those of you that are um, using your own application, I will go ahead and begin. CMDP stands for Compliance Monitoring Data Portal. It was created by EPA to facilitate the electronic reporting of compliance samples. As you all know, North Carolina has been doing electronic reporting for a number of years. Um, but there are still some states and privacy agencies that have not yet transitioned to you to doing the electronic reporting. Um, the CMDP application is also going to be compatible with EPA's new database that they are going to be releasing for us state users. Um, so. Um, we are interested um, here in North Carolina to go ahead and transition to using CMDP so that when EPA releases their new database, um, we'll, have, we'll already be prepared to electronically upload to the new database. These, this CMDP application is intended to be used by private laboratory users such as yourself, um, by state privacy agency users like me, and also by water system users. Although we have not yet um, finished testing or are ready to implement this side of CMDP yet, but we hope that in the future water systems will be able to log into CMDP and view the information that we have for them in our database and possibly request changes to that information if they see something that's incorrect. So right now the current process for uh, laboratory users is to generate your sample data file and then log into lab to state to upload that sam sample data file. And then once you upload that file, you would then certify and submit that sample information to our state database. The process with CMDP is very similar. Um, so you will use your application to generate an XML file that has um, that matches the CMDP output schema. And then you would log into CMDP and upload that XML file to the CMDP application. And then once it's uploaded to CMDP, you'll be able to review the information that's in the sample file and certify and submit that information to our state database. So there are many benefits of using um, CMDP for laboratory users. Um, one of the benefits is that there are edit checks provided in CMDP um, and it will let you know if there's any critical errors in your sample file um, before you even certify and submit them to the state. So right now, um, laboratory users, you have to log into lab to state and certify and submit your file before you get any rejection reasons for the sample not being able to go through. Um, but with CMDP, you'll be able to see if there's any issues with the sample information before you upload it. Um, so you can just delete the sample file out and make corrections before you go through the process of certifying and submitting. CMDP also has um, a sample status field, so it will show you um, exactly where in the step of the process your sample file is. Um, so when you upload a sample file to CMDP, it's going to show that the draft is with the preparer. And then from there you can send the 
draft to the reviewer and from the reviewer it gets sent to the certifier and the certifier is then able to submit the XML file to the state and once our state database receives that sample file it's going to change to this accepted by state status um, but I want to explain exactly what that accepted by state status means so an accepted by state status code indicates that the certified XML file has been received by our state database but through our testing we have found three cases in which individual samples in the file may still be rejected by our state database when the file is received and on CMDP side it's showing as being accepted by the state. So if you submit to us an XML file and um, your laboratory is not certified for the method code that is shown in the XML file, our database is going to reject that individual sample with the incorrect method code. Um, if a TCR schedule is not set up properly, um, if it's been closed or if the monitoring periods aren't associated, um, the sample file will also be rejected. Um, we're doing a lot on our end to, to make sure that we're running more reports and associating mon monitoring periods more frequently to help avoid this problem. Um, and the third instance is where the field name, um, AP name, is equal to A. Um, and for TCR, equal to A for the sample being absent. Um, and the count field um, is greater than zero, our database is going to reject that sample file. So if our database sees that a sample is absent for total coliforms, it's expecting that count for total coliforms to be equal to zero. So um, just go ahead and have the application set up to um, whenever there is an absent sample, that count is not greater than zero. So if one of these three cases does occur and samples are rejected, your lab will be notified through a report that's going to be emailed daily. Um, this report will display the rejection reasons or if no reje rejections occurred, this report will be blank. Um, so it's a little different from what you've had before where you're receiving an email with every file that goes through. Um, instead, you're just going to be receiving one email per day, and that email will summarize every sample that's been uploaded for that day. So our anticipated transition date is going to be October 1st of 2018. Um, by then, we would like all laboratories to have modified their existing applications and have their XML files matching the CMDP schema. And we're hoping on this date that to have all the lab dis state accounts disabled and have everyone using CMDP to certify and submit their sample files. Um, now, this transition date may change. And the reason for this is that um, EPA has currently not released a final production version of CMDP. Um, they were making some changes to some of the required fields and they released um, a new a new requirement to the states um, not too long ago and um, there was some disagreement with the states about adding the new required fields. So now EPA is going to go back to the pre previous version of CMDP, but are still making some changes outside of the required field names. Um, so once we hear from EPA that they have a final production version of CMDP, the transition date is going to be six months from the release date of CMDP. Um, so, for transitioning to CMDP, laboratory users are going to need to create an SCS account to access the CMDP application. So this is going to be a different username and password um, than your current NCID. 
Um, and this uh, Chromere stands for Cross Media Electronic Reporting Rule. Um, and this is what um, EPA is referring to when they say that um, when they were requiring information to be Chromere compliant. So users that are creating a, a laboratory administrator account, um, the registration for that is open and it begins um, at EPA's website. Um, so the laboratory user can select their partner, which is the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, and select the program, which is the CMDP Compliance Monitoring Data Portal. And then they will select their role, which there is a few to choose from, and uh, I will go into those into more detail. Um, but you will be selecting a private laboratory role, um, not a state lab or a um, state privacy agency user or a water system. Um, so be sure to, um, to select the private laboratory role. Um, you'll have to go through the usual username uh, creations of, you know, accepting rules and behavior and terms and conditions. And for the administrator roles, you will have to complete a identity verification that you will be using to um, verify your electronic signature. And then once you go through these steps, uh, this uh, we'll, we will receive your request here at the state and we can approve that role so that you'll be able to log into CMDP. So the roles that are going to be available for you are a private laboratory administrator, certifier, reviewer, and preparer. The administrator has the, re the rights um, to do all of the roles. They can prepare, review, and certify samples. And we recommend having at least two of these for each laboratory. Um, but you can have more if you, um, if you choose to. So um, these accounts must be approved by the state laboratory, or by, I'm sorry, they must be approved by the state primacy administrators. And um, we will approve those accounts um, before they'll be active and before you can log into CMDP. And these private laboratory administrators are the ones that are going to sponsor the certifier, reviewer, and preparer roles. So just like we here at the state will approve the administrator roles, the administrators will then approve their certifier, reviewers, and preparers. Um, so the certifier can prepare, review, and certify samples. Um, the reviewer can only prepare and review, and the preparer can only prepare. So it's really going to be up to the laboratory and, and how big you are and how many um, employees you have, how you want to have this set up. Um, whether you just have a few and everyone's going to be an administrator or, um, you know, you're going to have a few administrators and the rest be certifiers, or if you would like to restrict, restrict access to CMDP so you have some people that can only prepare and review the samples but can't actually submit anything to the state. Um, so this online Lexis Nexus Identity Assurance um, is required for the private laboratory administrator roles. And um, this is going to be so that you comply with EPA's Chromere legal requirements. And the additional steps for this role are going to include the um, identity assurance, the electronic or paper signature agreement, and an additional five challenge questions and answers that are going to be different from the challenge questions and answers that go with your SCS um, account. And then also a signature de device um, authentication process. Um, so we would like for all users to complete the electronic signature agreement if possible. Um, but we have had some users have issues uh, completing that electronic signature agreement. So if you're unable to do that, um, you can submit the paper electronic signature agreement, but that will need to be mailed to us here at the state 
um, so we can approve it. And that paper electronic signature will be sent to um, Carmelyn Walter, and uh, her contact information will be at the end of the presentation. But if you encounter any problems with these steps, um, please contact either Eric Chai or Carmelyn Walter. Um, but that um, if you do com complete the paper electronic signature, um, once we receive your electronic signature, we can um, approve uh, the identity um, assurance and then you can log in afterwards and, and finish the process by creating your five challenge questions and answers. Um, so to clarify again, there are, for those of you that have to um, do the identity assurance, so the view that are registering as laboratory administrators, um, you are going to have two sets of security questions. The first three are going to be used for your SCS account, and that's going to be if you forgot your password or you need to reset your password, you're going to answer those security questions to um, unlock your account. And then you're going to have the five questions for the identity assurance, and those are the questions that they're, they're going to ask you when you certify and submit a sample, and um, you have to answer those questions in order to submit the sample. So an important thing to note about the SCS accounts is that this password must be changed every 90 days. Um, so those three questions, uh, security questions that I mentioned are the ones that you'll be using to um, update this password. So just go ahead and make a note on your calendar, um, you know, every 90 days to go ahead and update this password. Um, and if you've got other passwords that need to be updated for other accounts, um, you can, you know, work to synchronize that with your other account set up so that you can just change all of your passwords at once. Um, so I wanted to go over a couple of um, the fields that are required in the XML files um, in regards to the CMDP conversion. And there are a couple fields that I just want to bring the IT chat staff attention to um, to make sure that these fields are done properly. Um, for the sample location fields um, for both IT and laboratory users, we are want, wanting to see a sample collection address in this field. Um, we are trying to capture this information in our database and, and would like to see that for both TCR and chem samples. Um, for the sample comments field, these comments are set up um, in a very particular order so we can capture information from these fields using our queries. Um, so play, pay close attention when looking at the R5 mapping document um, to make sure that these comments fields are set up correctly because if they are set up incorrectly, we won't be able to query that information that we need. Um, um, here in our office. The sample category name for TCR samples is microbial. Um, the old category name was TC, but just be sure uh, to note that this is not um, this is not allowed any longer. This is not permissible and the field name must be microbial. Um, the sample results field, um, for this you're also going to see that R5 mapping document, um, but to, the thing to note here is that when you're reporting a chlorine residual, um, chlorine residual does not require a certification. Um, so you do not have to provide a method code for this field. Um, and once again, uh, about this AP name field, if you're reporting an A in this, v in this field because the sample results were absent, then the count field must be zero. Um, and this says or empty, but um, CMDP does not allow, I mean, yeah, CMDP does not allow empty tags, so please make sure the tag is either removed 
or that, it's e that it is equal to zero if the sample results are absent. So um, the same for the chem samples. Uh, we'd like to see the collection address and um, the same for the sample comments. So uh, please make sure those are set up properly so that we can query that information. And uh, the sample category name for chem samples is now chem slash radionuclides. And the GE is no longer a permissible category name. Um, and for composite samples, the sample category name is going to just be composite. So there are important changes to note um, for this transition to CMDP and things to take into consideration um, while the, the application is being created to, to match CMDP's XML file schema. Um, so the first thing to note um, is one that I've already gone over, but laboratories will be receiving a daily report that summarizes any rejections that occurred um, you know, out beyond any error messages that were received in CMDP. Um, so those are going to cover the three errors that we've found um, where CMDP shows the file to be accepted by the state, but the file was in fact rejected um, in cases where the laboratory is not approved for the method code. Um, the total coliform sample is absent and the count is greater than zero or if the total coliform schedule is not set up properly. Um, so these XML fields are case sensitive. So if the case doesn't match the schema, the sample file is going to receive critical error messages. So just an important note to those of you working on the application, pay close attention to you know what they capitalize and what they don't because um, it, it will uh, cause the sample file to um, to receive critical error messages if if the case doesn't match. <clears throat> so empty tags are not accepted by CMDP and um, your users will receive a critical error message if the XML file has an empty tag. So empty fields, um, they should be programmed that they just are removed from the file um, because DMDP will not accept them. Certified files um, cannot be removed from CMDP. So it's really important for laboratory users to review the sample information before it's certified um, because once it's certified, it's going to stay in CMDP. Um, if a sample is uploaded and it's uh, certified and submitted and accepted by our database, we can still remove it from our database so that you can re-upload, but the user isn't going to be able to use the same sample ID number because that sample ID number is still going to be in CMDP and there's not a way to delete that information from CMDP once the information's been certified. So um, if a user runs into the situation where they need to resubmit um, a sample, then we recommend adding an extension to the sample information, either at the beginning or at the end, whatever your lab laboratory decides to do, but something to distinguish that that is a second submission of the same sample file. So this is just an example of um, what the laboratory is going to see in those daily email reports that I have mentioned. Um, so every day um, the laboratory is going to be receiving an email and this email has two, has, uh, it will, this email will uh, provide an Excel sheet that has two tabs and the first tab is going to display the sample information and any rejections that occurred with the sample information. And then the second tab is going to have the result information and any rejections that occurred with the result information. And once again, this, this email um, is going to be um, sent out daily. 
um, and it's just going to show an overview of anything that was rejected for that day's uploads. And if there were no rejections, then the Excel sheet will be empty. Um, so moving forward with some more of what, what you're going to see in CMDP. Um, there, you're going to see two sets of validation error messages um, when you're reviewing the samples. So as you can see here, we've gone to the validations tab, which I will show you how to get there when we start doing the demo. Um, but you'll see this federal reporting validation results. This is information that um, EPA recommends is reported, but um, it will um, here at the state level we do not require this information. So you can ignore all of the um, you can ignore all of the the errors that you receive in this section up here at the top. What you're going to be concerned with um, when you are reviewing the sample information in CMDP is clicking on the category for the sample file that you uploaded and paying attention to these totals. Um, so you've got a total of four samples, three of which had no errors and one had an error. And when you click on this, this XML, XML submittal validation error details is going to populate. And then you're going to be able to see um, the error description, like letting you know um, where the er error occurred. And in this case, it was an invalid facility sampling point ID. So at this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and um, get CMD pulled up so that I can demo the application for you and uh, just show you what you're going to what you're going to see when you get logged in to that application. Um, so I already have it pulled up here. Um, we'll see if I'm still logged in, but th this is going to be your landing page when um, when you log in to the CMDP application. You're going to be able to see which laboratories you're associated with, um, any profile change requests you've submitted to us, um, if you've had any um, changes in your laboratory information that you needed updated, you'd see any requests there. Um, and your work in progress you will see in this table here and all of the recent submissions to the state you'll see here. Um, the first tab up here we'll look at is the public water system profiles. And um, I got logged out. I'll go ahead and log back in real quick. Okay, um, so we come back here to the home page, um, but next we'll look at this uh, PWS profiles page. Um, so this is actually another great benefit of CMDP is that you have access from CMDP to the sample or for uh, the water system information that we have available in our database. Um, so you can even see water systems here that have been inactivated or ones that are pending activation. And if you had a system that um, had given you information and maybe it was telling you that the facility ID was wrong, you could actually open up the water system information by double clicking. And um, CMDP is set up so that every time you open something, you get a new ta you get a new tab. Um, so you see the water system profile um, open here in a new tab, and you can see the facility IDs for the different facilities that they have, um, their common header, their distribution, storage bladders, treatment plants. Um, so if they reported to you that their treatment plant um, was facility ID uh, PO2, 
you could actually go here and see it's not PO2 but actually PO1. Um, so that's a great feature about CMDP um, that you can go in and, and actually see what we have in our database um, for the water system information. Um, so the next tab is going to be our laboratories profiles tab. Um, here you can see the laboratories that, um, that you're associated with um, and the information for that laboratory. Um, if you're associated with multiple labs, you would be able to see all of those there. And the drinking water samples job is the page that you're going to be primarily concerned with because this is the page that summarizes all of the XML files that you've uploaded to CMDP. Um, so I have a couple of uh, files here that I've already uploaded. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and click on one of these to show you what that's going to look like. Again, you can see when you double click, it's going to open that file information up in a new tab. So you can have multiple tabs open at once. And um, you'll be able to see, um, you, as you can see here, all of the sample information that was available in this sample file. Um, so for this test sample file, um, I had uploaded some repeats and a groundwater sample. Um, I can actually double click on each of these samples individually to um, expand that information and see exactly um, what was keyed in when um, the, the XML file was created. Um, so I can see the analyte result information, the analysis start time and end time, um, the collection date, the collection time, and so if you're reviewing this information and you see anything that's incorrect, um, you can go ahead and um, make the corrections before you certify and submit to the state. And um, so this, this validations tab right here was the one that I had shown you um, shown shown you in the in the presentation and as you can see you've got this federal reporting validation results uh, table and you're just going to ignore anything that shows up in this table um, this is this is not something that um, that we're counting as a requirement and what you're going to be concerned with um, is what is is happening in this XML submittal validation table and this XML uh, error details down here so if I click on my category, which is microbial, I can see that I have a total of four samples that were submitted. Four of those were without errors and um, zero were with errors. And you can see down here this XML submittal validation error detail is blank. Um, so let's go back to the job maintenance view and now I want to demo how we go through the steps of actually uploading the XML file. So up here at the top you'll see this green plus sign for create a new job. So the user will click create new job and go to upload file. And uh, choosing a file to upload will open your computer browser and I've got some demo samples that um, I have saved here and we'll go ahead and select one of these ones with a critical error. Oh, okay so um, one thing I always do, and I'll just go ahead and point this out, you have to wait until this green done uh, word appears um, so that you know that the file finished uploading. So once it says done, um, you can click upload, which it looks like it went through. Um, let's go ahead and close this. Um, so you can see here this this file that I just put through this, this demo to. 
and when you come to the sample results page um, we had our, our new tab open by double clicking we come to the sample results page and we don't see anything here and you remember from the last sample file I showed you um, we should be able to see the sample information in this page if everything went through properly so we'll go to our, our validations page and um, we see that we had four microbial samples that came through and four of those had errors um, so if we click this this category um, we'll see down here at the bottom a summary of these submittal validation error details and now these um, these columns can be expanded and uh, collapsed as you see fit so you can um, make these narrower so you can expand uh, to read this error description a little easier um, or see more of them at one time but um, we're getting an error about the method code um, which I explained in the presentation a little earlier that EPA is still um, working on the final production version of this application and they did add some new required fields to that method code and they still haven't gone back and removed those yet which is why we're seeing this error message um, but in your case if there was a critical error um, if you had an incorrect method code name or if you had um, a sample ID that had already been used previously that was saved in CMDP you would see that show up in these critical errors um, so in this case you would know um, you made a mistake and you want to go ahead and make corrections to this file and re-upload so to remove this file we just check this box over here on the left um, the line is going to highlight and then we go to this red X to remove the record and we say yes we're sure we want to have it removed and it's going to remove from your page um, the same process is going to go um, for chem and radionuclide samples the one I just demoed was a microbial sample but um, if you wanted to upload a chem sample same process we go to create new job we go to upload file we choose a file to upload and uh, we'll select our lead and copper sample here so we wait until it finishes uploading this time and then we click the upload button and uh, we click close and our new file has appeared in our drinking water sample jobs so if we double click it shows up in a new tab and uh, we don't see any data here on the sample results page and when we go to the validations we can see now that the chem radionuclides has a total of five samples and five of those are without errors or five of those I'm sorry are with errors and you can see we're getting this um, the same error message that um, we have a, a method code name which is required which is a new field that they added um, that we requested that they remove um, so it's looking for a field that says method name that field isn't there and it's giving us um, this error description so this is the file that we don't want to upload so we would select it go to the red X to remove and tell it yes we are sure we want to remove the records um, now I would like to show you all um, how to go through the steps if you did um, have a sample come through uh, for example uh, one of my um, old test files here I have a chem radionuclide sample with the you can see here the status is draft with preparer so if we've just uploaded this file the first thing we're going to want to do is double click and review the sample information 
So here I have a couple of samples for the city of Raleigh. Um, they're all lead and copper samples. And so I can just briefly review the information, the sample IDs, the collection date, and uh, I can go through each of these samples individually to review the information within them to make sure that I input all of the sample information properly. So I go through um, each of these and um, I feel that all the information I put in there is correct. I would go to my validations tab um, and uh, ignore all of this up here. Um, it looks like this file that I had uploaded previously does have some critical errors. Um, so we would be able to review those at the bottom. And in this case, I'm getting um, an error that says that this sample already exists. So I have two samples in this file that um, have already been uploaded to CMDP, um, but the other five are, um, are showing without errors. And I can see exactly which two ID numbers here are associated with a sample already existing. Um, but to go ahead and demo for you, um, let's just say that this file here, we, we went through, um, we corrected the two samples that, that had already existed and changed their ID numbers and we re-uploaded. And now we're ready to go through the process to certify and submit this to the state. So we highlight the sample file that we'd like to submit. And um, right now the draft is with the preparer and we're going to send it to the reviewer. So in my case, I'm an administrator, so um, I have um, access to all of the user roles. So I'm just going to send this to myself as the reviewer. And um, I had already gone over it while uh, while I, it was in the preparer role. So I've already reviewed everything. I know that this is the information that I want to submit. So I just go ahead and check it again, um, send it to certifier, which again, since I have all the roles, um, I am still the certifier in this case. So I send it to myself once again. And then um, I can see the draft is with the certifier. It's still with me. Um, and I'm gonna go through the final step. I click this sample and go up here to the top and certify and submit to this date. So in this case, it's gonna ask me um, for my username and password again. And I'm gonna type this in just to make sure that it is up to date. So now I come to this new page and it wants to confirm my identity and make sure that I am the person that is supposed to be uploading this sample. So I answer my security question, which this is our test account, so we don't put anything too complicated in these. Um, but I, I put in the answer to my security question and I certify that I am the person that's supposed to be submitting this file and I hit submit. Okay, so the page refreshes, and this line here you can see is now showing, whoops, go back to the job maintenance view. Um, so you can see it says submitted. And the way we're gonna have this set up is that um, every so often, every 30 minutes or hour or so, our database is gonna call the information in the CMDP and um, pull anything that um, pull anything that's been submitted. So um, at this step, it just kind of sits and waits in queue for our database to just kind of come and pull the data. Um, and you saw that old alert that just came up. I did just get an email 
um, regarding the CMDP upload, letting me know that I had uploaded and, uploaded and certified a file. Um, so once once the database pulls that information, it'll go to this accepted by state status that you can see um, in this sample right here. And I've double clicked on this to, to show you show you one more thing. Actually, I didn't need to double click, but um, if you if you select this sample after it's been accepted by the state, you have this option to download the samples. So let's click this download samples. And um, we'll just go ahead and and uh, open this up in our browser. Um, but you'll be able to see, to download the information that was available in that sample file. So this particular one that I downloaded, um, it just had the one, um, the one sample in it. Um, it was just a, a routine positive sample, but I can download the information for that. And I can see that it was prepared, reviewed, and certified, certified by me um, on these dates. And I've got all the information I need, so if you need to print a copy for your files, or if you like to um, print a copy that is then delivered to the water system to let them know that the um, sample information has been uploaded, this, this option is available to you in CMDP. Um, so to go ahead and just go through these last couple of slides, or last couple of uh, tabs we have, there is a place to search for individual samples. Um, so if you have a lot of sample files you've been working on, or if you're going through and reviewing a bunch all at once and, do, once and doing a big batch, um, you might want to search for a specific job ID or maybe a specific water system ID um, for a system you know that you were working on their samples. And you can do that to, to, to search for, for any of the information that's in your drinking water sample jobs. Because um, as you can see, this um, as you go through, this list does get kind of long. Um, but I haven't cleared out all of the, the sample files that um, have critical errors either. Um, so we have that search individual samples tab. We also have the system administration tab. Um, so if you are an administrator, if you receive requests from your employees to be approved for a certain role, you can manage that in your CMDP account. So I'm going to switch back over real quick to the presentation. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to go over with you all. Um, If we can get back to where we're at, just to make sure we've gone over everything. Um, we demoed the uploading of an XML file, um, going to the create new job and selecting a file from your computer. Um, we went through the demo to review and certify files. Um, Uh, where you select it, you're going to send it to the reviewer, send it to the certifier, um, certify and submit to the state. Um, and there's one more demo I wanted to do for you all. And I wanted to demo um, an application that we've been working on um, to help you all um, keep track of the sample information that you've uploaded to our database a little easier. So I want to demo this sample lookup tool. Um, and this is something that is still um, that's uh, still a, a work in progress. Um, but basically, we're going to have these reports that are available to you online. Um, and we've got here this sample lookup tool reports. So we click on this sample lookup tool, and um, it looks like my session has expired here. At the problems with 
logging into everything uh, prior to starting the demonstration, but if you'll give me just a minute, um, I'll get that pulled up. Okay. So, enter in the web address to go to the reports tool. Um, okay, you're going to get this um, prompt to enter um, a date range. Uh, so let's say, for example, um, I wanted to see all the samples that I uploaded for February. Um, I could go ahead and type in February 1st and February 28th. And then it's going to ask me for my certified laboratory ID. Um, which I'm going to type in one here to test. And if you would like, you can enter in values for a water system ID. So <clears throat> if you were a water system, you would probably want to see the information for your water system ID, which would be very similar to what we have set up in Drinking Water Watch. But we realized that our laboratory users, they aren't interested in just one water system ID. They want to see what samples have been uploaded for all of their water system IDs. So. Um, we click OK. We, we don't want to specify any specific water system ID, and we just want to see everything that we've uploaded for February. So we've got two separate tabs, um, the chem sample reports and the TCR sample reports. And scrolling down through here, you can see we've got a lot of information that was reported for February. Um, and with these reports, we have an export tool right up here at the top um, with a drop down so you could export this document as an excel and then um, you could sort the information um, or save it somewhere if you'd like to keep track of everything that's been reported and um, let's go ahead and open this up in excel um, I do want to point out for um, when you're looking in this view, let's minimize that for a minute. When you're looking at this view um, using the web intelligence report, um, there is a limit to the number of samples you can see um, on the page. So you would um, need to uh, use these errors at the bottom to toggle between pages, which is why it's, which is why it's nice to be able to, um, and just why it's nice to be able to export it as an Excel document because, <clears throat> excuse me, you will be able to see everything all on one page. Um, you'll be able to sort it, um, fil um, filter it to however you need, um, or uh, save the file. Um, if you would like to have an electronic saving of uh, the samples that you've uploaded. Okay, so that is everything um, that I have for this demo. Um, I will go ahead and pull back up uh, the presentation here um, to, to get you the contact information um, if you do have any questions. Um, so if you have any questions regarding, um, creating the new, uh,
creating your new application or matching that CMDP XML file schema. Um, Eric Chai is the head of our IT staff here at Public Water Supply and he would be the best person to contact regarding that. Um, Carmel and Walter is going to be um, responsible for approving your CMDP roles. Um, so if you have any issues um, once you get registered, um, if you're, you know, you don't see that your role has gotten approved or you have questions about um, uh, the paper electronic signature, um, she would be the best person to contact regarding that. And my co uh, contact information is available here as well. And uh, uh, any other questions um, that you have, um, I'd be happy to answer. Um, between the three of us, I think that we, we should be able to get you on the right track. Um, so I would like to thank you for your time. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please contact us. Thank you.